um, I wanted to format this was sort of a, like a top ten kind of list. So we have um, top ten considerations for written and comprehensive exams, and, and I'm gonna, I've got a PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to talk for a little while. We're going to go through that, but then I want to give you the opportunity to ask questions. But also feel free while I'm talking and, and we're going through some of the, the PowerPoint slides to ask to stop and ask me questions. Okay, so that would be fine. All right. First of all, prepare. I think you know you think well of course, Dr. Snyder, but you know I think sometimes students think that well you know I've gone through my courses and this is kind of just the next step and so I go and it's kind of a perfunctory kind of requirement thing that I have to do and you need to prepare and it's not just sort of the just the next, it's not like taking well just another course you have to prepare for this and I'll talk more about that um, foundation and theory. In talking with uh, the faculty, one of the things that they emphasized was that this should really build on um, your undergrad experience as well. That it's not just about the class notes that you've had just for your master's degree, but it's about the whole, the whole picture. It's about the whole experience that you've had. It, and that's why it's called a comprehensive exam. So, Really, anything within the realm of the discipline is important. And you have to think and prepare beyond just class notes. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk more about you know, what do I mean by that and how do, I, how do I do that. And one way is that you have to get to that higher level of thinking in terms of integration and, and synthesis. So it is, it's taking it's different than just taking a class. You go to a class, you do the assignments, and you get a grade. No, you get a good grade. So you think, oh well, you know, we find it comes. But there's, there's, it's a difference between taking a class and, and a set of, and a series of classes, and then now you need to pull those classes together and integrate and synthesize that information and think critically. So it's very different than just an assignment or just a paper you would write for a class. You're now pulling together all the pieces of the puzzle, so to speak. It's a culmination. It's a culmination of, of all your experiences of undergrad and graduate. And that's your chance now to, to pull that together and, and to look at the whole big picture. Again, it's not just based on your classes. It's based on everything that brought you to that point. Okay, so you, it is about looking at the whole big picture. <coughs> it is a higher order of thinking. There's analysis and synthesis and evaluation that takes place. It's not just about, you know, memorizing some information and then, you know, spewing that forth on the exam and then, you know, no critical thinking happens. It, it's, it's very much about uh, critically examining your field and, and thinking about your experiences in your coursework. This isn't simply an extension of your bachelor's. A master's degree is not just a natural next step. It sounds like it is, but it, it really isn't just a next step. It's not just a, a set of courses now that, okay, well, I've done my bachelor's, now I'm going to just take these extra courses, and these series of courses, and then I'll have my master's degree. It's so much more than that. It's the next level. You can think about it as the next level. And the same thing with comps. It's the written and the orals now are the next level even above, over and above the coursework. So there's there's layers and there's levels. And you have to think of it in that way. All right, any questions so far? standards. You need to think about having higher standards and, and there are higher standards that we have for you and you need to have those of yourself knowing that this is a master's degree. And we want to, as faculty, we want to facilitate the graduation process for you and we want to feel proud. And we are, our intent is to provide support to you. 
We aren't there to uh, grill. We aren't there to look for things that you don't know. Ooh, let's see how we can stump the student or see how we can put the student on the spot or let's see how we can make the student feel even more anxious than they already do. You know, that's not our intent at all. And we, we do everything we can to facilitate that process. But by the same token, then you need to show us that you now have earned that right to, you know, to graduate and, and, and um, to be given a master's degree. So you have to demonstrate to us that I, I, I know this information. You know, and I can give what is expected of me. Um, so I don't want uh, students to think that, ooh, faculty are you know, trying to make this a anxiety-producing experience. And we already know that it is. So we're, you know, we don't want to add to that in any way. And so we really are very supportive faculty. And I, I think that, that you know that. Also. Again, this isn't just going through the motions. It isn't just uh, some sort of meaningless requirement. Kind of like, well, I've done all this now. I'm just going to, now I just have to do my writtens and my comps, and I, or my writtens and my ors, and I'm done. No, it's not a meaningless requirement, or just some, again, some just natural next step. It's very, it's, it's an important process. And we do take it very seriously, and, but we also do everything we can to support you through that process. Top 10 do's and don'ts for oral exams. Don't make generalizations. Sometimes students come to the orals and they, they'll talk in kind of sweeping generalizations. So for example, a student might say, well, most, and we'll say, well, about what percentage? Well, a lot, probably a lot, you know, I mean, you need to have your facts straight. You need to talk like you are the expert. So don't make sweeping generalizations. Be as specific as you can. And the worst thing, if kind of those generalizations turn into stereotypes that we've been, you know, we'd be talking about in our classes, whether it's gerontology or FCS, you know, or, or whatever it might be. The worst thing would be is if, you know, now you start getting into some some stereotypes and sweeping generalizations. So be specific. Be grounded in your facts. Don't be defensive. It's, it might be called an oral defense, but don't be defensive. And you think, well, who would be defensive? Well, you know, I've, I've seen that. This has, you know, been several years, but sometimes students get defensive, and that's, that would probably not be a good idea. Let's just say that. Don't be defensive. Um, you know, don't be argumentative. And, we're not there to put you in the hot seat, so there's no reason for you to be defensive about the process. Don't story tell. Sometimes students have a tendency to try to cover up what they don't know with a story. And it's okay to maybe, you know, if you've got an example, and I understand people do, that's how people talk, people have examples that they want to share, maybe to illustrate a point, but it needs to have a point. But sometimes, you know, students will launch into just story after story after story after story. You know, well, my grandma did this, or my aunt did that, or I have a cousin that, you know, we don't, that's not what the, that process is about either. Again, you need to talk as a professional. Don't play with your hair or your jewelry. You think, well, who would do that? Well, sometimes people get nervous, and so they start doing that, and they don't even realize it. And the next thing you know, you've got somebody doing this. Um, um, and you're like, oh dear. And they just keep doing that. They just keep doing that. And, thinking, and then it's very distracting. And next thing you know, you're just focusing on them, focusing on their jewelry. So don't, you know, try not to do things like that. 